Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are continuing on with a special tools investigation. We're going to look at two tools in the special tools palette, the beam angle and the reverse stem tool. And the beam angle tool is this one. It looks like a beam with arrows uh, going up and down. That's the beam angle tool. And the reverse stem tool is this one. It's just a two to the left. But we're going to start with the beam angle tool. These tools kind of relate to each other in a, in a specific way, which is why I kind of chose to add them uh, to the same video. And uh, But let's start with the beam angle tool, which is rather simple. It does what you would think it would do. You click in a measure, and you're going to get handles on the left and right side of every uh, set of beams that exist in that measure. So there's uh, four handles in this measure. And it's pretty simple what they do. Those handles can just be moved up and down. And the left handle will change the height of the entire beam. So the whole beam will move parallel together. The right handle will actually change the angle. And you can change these angles you know, as far as you need to. Um, but that's what they do. The, you can't change the angle with the left one, only the height. Um, it's only the right one that will change the angle. And that's really all there is to it. The beam um, height can actually go, you know, across the other side of the, the notes as well. So um, there's some options there. And this is where the reverse stem tool will come in play in a second. I'll show you about that. Uh, we can right click these handles, but the only options you have here is remove manual adjustments, which will not only remove the manual adjustments for that particular handle, but it will actually do it for both handles. So it resets the entire beam, not just, you know, one side of it, you know, either the angle or the height. Uh, so if you only do that, but you right click and remove manual adjustments there, it also resets that. Um, also, as usual, delete or clear, if you have any of these handles selected, will remove the manual adjustments. And as you saw from this contextual menu, you can unlink these beams, which means that now um, the beam height and angle can be different between the score and the parts. So now that it's unlinked, I've made this change in the score, it will not make it in the part. Of course, you can always relink it and uh, clear it. And the usual modifier key here, command on the Mac, will you know unlink in the score. Or if you were to do that in the part, it would remain linked in the, the score in the part. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's it. The, the beam angle tool is rather simple. It will work on any type of beam. So 16th beams will work the same way. You're actually controlling the entire uh, beaming set. So, you know, you're moving both um, the primary and secondary beams together here. There is a way to adjust only the secondary beams, but that's in a lesson coming up soon. Uh, but this beam angle tool basically changed the, uh, the entire beamed set. All right, so let's move on to the reverse stem tool, which is this one here. And uh, this one's a little bit different. So with the reverse stem tool, you click in a measure and you're gonna get handles on either side of the note up and down. You cannot right click these handles. There's no contextual menu. Um, you can't select a handle and delete it. Um, that doesn't work. These are just toggles. You either have the handle selected or not selected. And as you see, when you select a handle, it reverses the stem to the other side of the note head, um, which is the function of this particular tool. And there is some tricky things going on with whether or not you need to check the bottom or top handle above or below a note. Um, there is sometimes a difference between doing that. You can see that you know choosing the bottom handle here doesn't do anything, but choosing the upper handle will reverse the stem. Um, it, it's it's a, almost impossible for me to kind of explain the differences here. Um, there is some technical differences. It has to do with sort of the, the stem lengths and, and what's going on. So you can check all four of these and get this weird result. Um, but it's really not even you know necessary get necessary to get into unless you're like a um, a plugin uh, developer or something. Um, but there are some differences to whether or not you're checking the bottom or top one. But generally speaking, you know, if one of them doesn't work, <laughs> check the other one and it will reverse the stem. Um, and you can check, you know, in this particular case, we're going to check the second and fourth one. And you'll notice some weird stuff happens like the beam now crosses into the note heads. Um, and this is going to be different depending on the scenario. Like if I were to do it over here where there's some more space doing the same type of thing, you know, it will actually get out of the way. And again, this has to do with minimum um, uh, stem lengths on beams and stuff. And, you know, this is this stems going to the middle line and there, there's some, you know, uh, um, requirements here. According to the document options, there's a bunch of things going on with the beams, with the stem lengths and all that stuff. 
Um, so, it, you know, it's almost too complicated to get into and honestly not even worth it. But the important thing to realize is that, you know, checking some of these boxes will indeed reverse the stem on the note head. This is why it's important to know that these two tools kind of go hand in hand because now once we've done this, we can now use this beam angle tool in this measure to make the correct adjustment if we need to have that beam centered between those note heads, right? Um, and you can change the angle as well. So uh, this is again is the importance of um, using these two two tools in conjunction. Again, sometimes you don't even need to do that because it will look pretty good anyway. Although maybe, you know, maybe you don't like the angle there, so we could do it differently, whatever you want to do. Um, but basically that's how these, that's how these two uh, different tools work. You just uh, select the, the things and it, it will get uh, crossed. Now there's one interesting option I want to talk about. In the document options under stems, there is this option here called display reverse stemming. And by default, this is uh, selected. And really there's no reason to unselect it. When you do unselect it, um, you'll see that all of those uh, stem reversals go away. They just don't appear. Um, and I don't know why you'd want to do that, but that would, I guess, be one quick way to just undo everything. But um, generally speaking, you just want to keep that uh, checked to make sure that you're displaying all of that. Incidentally, reverse stemming is not unlinkable, so um, there's no way to actually, you know, reverse stem in a in a part, but not a, a score. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, even though the beam angle tool is unlinkable, the reverse stem tool is not. And uh, I'm just going to go back here and make sure that this is all reset back to zero. There's one other thing related to this that I want to talk about. And this, these two measures here are a perfect example of this, um, where you've probably seen in piano parts sometimes uh, what's called cross staff beaming, where you have these, you can take these low notes here and throw them into the left hand and have them beam upwards to the right hand like that. This is totally possible uh, in a couple of ways in Finale. And let me show you the manual way to do this first, and then I'll show you the easy way. So. Uh, this actually involves the note mover tool, which is this guy, which I've never talked about. But uh, in the note mover tool, there's this note mover menu. What you want to do is choose the cross staff option. And what you can do is click in a measure to get handles on every single one of those notes. And with this tool, you can actually just lasso select the ones you want and then just drag those notes down into the left hand and you'll see those notes uh, get displayed in the left hand here. Now technically these notes actually still exist in the right hand so if you go into uh, speedy entry for example you'll actually see them reappear in the uh, treble clef there uh, and you'll see that nothing exists in the left hand. And because of this, you do end up with these like, you know, rests here that you probably don't need. So whenever you do this, you kind of have to add a real whole rest and hide it uh, so that you can get the appropriate type of um, uh, notation here. Now, in this scenario, it's probably a better idea to have these uh, beams go in the middle, right? So this is where we can use those tool tools, including the uh, stem reversal tool. We'll do kind of what we did before. And on these last two notes here and the first three notes here um, to get the, uh, the the beam in the middle. But of course you'll see that it doesn't quite calculate the beam to go directly in the middle. So again, we can use that beam angle tool and we can put this wherever we want, put it on a little bit of an angle, put this wherever we want, maybe a little lower, get a little angled, there we go. And so that's one way to do cross staff beamings. That's the slow way. Let me just go ahead and undo all of this one undo at a time until we get back to where we started. There we go. Uh, there's a much quicker way to do this. Uh, in Finale, you have a plugin that comes um, with the TG Tools light set here called Cross Staff, and this is what we're going to use. So just choose that Cross Staff plugin, and you'll get this Cross Staff plugin window, and there's a bunch of different options here. Fill empty destination measures with invisible hole rest. That's the thing that you saw me do there, so we kind of definitely want to keep that checked. Remove existing cross staff data. If there was cross staff data here, it will remove it and start over. You can choose to move single notes, octaves, chords, etc., whatever you want to do. Um, apply to one entry out of one. Um, if you have chords here, you can you know deal with that. Um, start with uh, which entry number of selection one. And then you get a split point. So in this case, we want to uh, move the pitches below, let's say, B3 here, not A3. Um, all the pitches below B3 cross staff notes to which staff the next staff, meaning the next staff down. So 
I've got these measures selected. We're moving all the notes below B3 to the next staff, and we press go. And you'll see that in one fell swoop, it does exactly what I did manually before. Uh, it hides the whole rest, it moves these, it does the uh, reverse stemming, and it also changes the beam angle so that the beams sort of go, uh, you know, kind of better in between the two staffs here, right? So that does it all in one shot. So this little cross staff uh, plugin is a much better way to do this. Now, there is another, yet another way to do this, which is actually kind of cool. This particular plugin, this cross staff uh, plugin, does have a shortcut attached to it, which is really kind of neat. And this is built into Finale. So, but the way that this works is that it moves all of the notes at once. So with the option key held down, I believe it's Alt on uh, uh, Windows, with the option key held down, just press the down arrow, and you can move all the notes in the selection down to the lower staff. Now this is not what you wanna do. You don't wanna move the top ones, right? So what you can do here is just select a partial measure, just the first note, option down, and then you can do that with the two notes here, option down. Uh, you can do it with these three notes, option down, and with these two notes option down. So you don't even have to go into the actual plugin to do this. You can just choose uh, which notes you want to move to the lower staff. And option up will do it the other way. So if you have notes in the bottom staff that you want to move up, like these three sixth or these three sixteenth notes, option up will move them upwards. And of course you'll get the cross staff beaming and everything. And uh, we can do the same here. Maybe we'll take the last two and do option down uh, to get that uh, cross staff beaming. And it looks great. I mean, you can make adjustments from here if you really want, if you're not completely happy with the beam angle, for example, like if this one you just want a little bit higher or something, or maybe you want to angle it for whatever reason, you can make adjustments uh, you know, to, to taste, I guess, as it were. So there you go. So that's the, um, the beam angle tool which is this guy and the cross staff tool. And I also showed you that cross staff plugin, which is a, a really handy uh, tool to know about. So yeah, so there you go. That's all there is to it. I hope this has helped. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the broken beam and the secondary beam break tool. I think I can get both of those uh, tools into the same video. So we'll do that next, all right? And yeah, that's it. Once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, please don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you soon on the next video.